لله الذي شرح صدور أهل الإسلام بهداه ونكث في قلوب أهل الطغيان فلا تعل حكمة أبدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها أحب فردا صمدا وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ما أكرمها عبدا وسيدا ما أكرمه عبدا وسيدا وعذابه أصلا ومحتدا وصلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه غيوث الندى وليوث العدى صلاة وسلاما دائمين من اليوم إلا أن يبعث الناس غدا أما قريبا دوسن سيستس الإسلام The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم on a special day of Eid the first thing that he would do is to be involved in the salah by God be afraid and then he would move on to do a sacrifice being the son of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أول ما نبدأ به في يومنا هذا هو أن نصلي ثم ننحى صدق رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Saying that the very first thing that he would do on the day of Eid, Eid of Adha, is to do the Salah and then to do a sacrifice. He continued, Man dhabaha qabla Salah, whosoever does a sacrifice before Salah, fa innama hiya lahmuk shatin, that indeed is just meat that he has been offered not complying with the sunnah of the Prophet not offering a sacrifice as stipulated as it should have been for this day the day of Eid meaning it's not within the sunnah so if he has done so meaning that he has done a sacrifice before the salah then he needs to repeat it to do the sacrifice after the salah to comply with the Sunnah of the Prophet This is one of the acts or the meritorious acts that we should be involved in in these days in the month of the Hijjah. The first ten days are very important. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَيَالٍ عَشْرٍ and by the ten nights, meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making an oath in Surah Al-Fajr. Wal-Fajr, wa layalin ash, wa shaf'i wal wad. Wa layli idha yas, hal fi dhalika qasam al-lahi hajj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins this surah in Surah Al-Fajr. By saying wal-Fajr, he's making an oath. He's swearing in these ayats, five different oaths that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes. Aqsamun khamsa. Five different oaths. The first one, he talks about what the fajr. Fajr in itself comes from the word fajr. First to understand what it actually means, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to say to us, we need to understand the root word fajr. This literally means to separate, to divide, to cut, to cleave. To break apart more or less but it relates to divide so when we talk about well fitch like when we look for salat al fitch we want to know when is the time for salat al fitch besides looking at the, the calendar you know, on a daily basis the real the real place that we should be looking at is looking at the sky looking where the sun is rising from and when you see the first streak of light then you know it is fitch it's dawn so what happens there is that what Allah subhanahu wa is saying is what the fitch is actually that streak of light it separates the night from the day. In Fijaru, Bulman and in the hair. It's a separation. It's a process of separation. It separates the darkness and brings you into light. That's when you see the first streak of light in the morning. That, that's what is called dawn in itself. Well fitch. The Mufassirun will explain Fitch in this area, it refers to Fitch Fi awwali yawm fi muharram That it refers to the very first day 
It refers to fetch on the first day of Adam. Why? Because that's the time when the years are separated. The old year is separated from the new year in itself. Another opinion expressed by the Mufassirun that it refers to the fetch of the Hijjah. But when the fetch begins in the Hijjah, that's the time when Allah subhanahu wa speaks about وَلَيَالٍ عَشْ For these spread, precious nights وَلَيَالٍ عَشْ The ten nights referring to the ten nights of the Hijjah. In a hadith that the Prophet sallallahu talks about how important it is in terms of these ten nights. Ten nights inclusive of the days as well. So when Allah subhanahu wa says وَلَيَالٍ عَشْ refer to the good deeds that we should be actively involved in these ten days, the first ten days of Dhul Hijjah. The Prophet ﷺ says, مَا مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أَعْظَمْ وَالْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحِ فِيهِنَّ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْهُ فِي هَذِهِ الْأَيَّامِ That there are no deed that is more precious and has tremendous reward than the deeds that are being done in these months uh, these days in the first ten days of the Hijjah. That then hasten and be plentiful in saying the Tahleel that is La ilaha illallah. Takbir. The greatness of Allah. <coughs> we need to increase. فَأَكْثِرُوا فَأَكْثِرُوا Increase in saying لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله Increase in saying Allah Akbar Increase in saying Alhamdulillah Like what we've been saying Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi <coughs> We continue to extol the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because He is the only one that is worthy to have the praise. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is encouraging us that we need to make maximum use of these days of the Hijjah, which most of it have already gone. So, وَالْفَجْ وَلَيَالِ نَعَشْ And by the ten nights, وَالشَّفْعِ وَالْوِتْ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes an oath by the shaf and the wit. وَالشَّفْعِ وَالْوِتْ What does it mean? I just want to focus on this one particular ayah that relates to the importance of these days, the importance of the days to come, the next three days, and also the importance of these days in our life. That if we were to use this as the basis to increase and maximize our good deeds, then we can take it along with us for the rest of the year. As the Prophet says that if you had the opportunity to fast in a month of Arafah like yesterday, we have done so. Arafah. That the fasting of the day of Arafah, you kept your Sanatayn. That the expiate sins were two years. The year that went by and the year that you kept your Sanatayn. Ma'abiyyatan wal mustaqbilat. That it expiates the sins of the year that went by and the year that is coming. It is important for us to maximize the use of these days. <coughs> Coming back to the ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, <coughs> that it refers to the odd and even number. Washaf refers to even. Walwat refers to Odd. But in English, if you were to say what Shafi wa and you say odd and even number, what does it mean to us? It doesn't mean much to us. But we need to understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to say. What Shafi wa means. You see the word Shafi'ah. Shafi'ah means intercession. And when one speaks about intercession, it means that somebody is interceding for somebody else. Meaning two people have come together. There is a pair, there is a couple coming together. Because one person is advocating for the other person. So that means there is a pair. So shaf refers to a couple or a pair. 
Well, wits refers to singular, singular, one. Or it refers to an odd number, like three, five, seven, nine, eleven. That sort of understanding we need to have when these words are used. In Arabic, the Arabs would say, كَانَ وِتْرٍ فَشَفَعْتُ It was one, and I made it two. Meaning I add another one to it, and becomes a couple. It means it becomes a pair. So we need to think about shaf as being a pair in itself. وَشَفْعِ وَالْوِتْرٍ كَانَ وِتْرٍ فَشَفَعْتُهُ بِآخَرٍ That it was one, and I add another one to it, so it becomes a pair. So when Allah subhanahu wa says, وَشَفْعِ وَالْوِتْرٍ He's saying, referring to those that, goes in, those that go in pairs, and those that are singular. Let us look at some examples. The Prophet ﷺ says that this area is relating to Salah. How does it re re relate to Salah? Because in Salah, مِنْهَا شَفْعٌ وَمِنْهَا وِتْرٌ Because in Salah you have Shaf and you have Wit. You have Salah that has two Rak, four Rak, six Rak, eight Rak. And you also have Rak that has got one like Salat al -wit. And you have uh, Salah that has got three, like Salat al -wit, or Salat al -Maghrib. Or you have Salah that has got five, Raka, like Salat al -wit. So you have Salah that comes in the form of Shaf'un wa Witrun. So the Prophet says, it refers to Salah. In another hadith of the Prophet it says it's referred to Yawmun the day of sacrifice. It's today, starting from today. And what refers to Yawmu Arafah. How comes it refer to Yawmu Arafah? And it refers to Yawmu Nahad, the day of sacrifice. You see, the day of sacrifice is the tenth day. And tenth is an even number. It's tenth. And Yawmu Arafah is the ninth day of the Hijr. And it refers to the ninth day, it's the ninth day, and that's an odd number. So, what Shaf al Wat refers to Yawm al Nahr, or Yawm al Arafah. In another hadith, or another explanation from the Mufassirun, it said it refers to the first ten days of the Hijjah that we are in at the moment. The first ten days refers to a shepherd. And the Wat refers to a Yawm al It refers to the three days when you're at Mina. People that were involved in Hajj, Hajjaj, it refers to them. It talks about the 11th, the 12th, and the 13th. That's an odd number. And the first 10 days, it's an even number. Among the Fasirud, they said it refers, a chef refers to the Khalq Allah. It refers to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, when you talk about the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says in the Quran, وَمِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَمِنْ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ خَلَقَنَا زَوْجَيْنِ لَأَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ وَخَلَقَنَاكُمْ لِزْوَاجِهِ And from everything we have created pairs. Look around in the world today and think about the pairs. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about. By the fact that He says about وَالْفَجْ That's the very first point. وَالْلَيْنِ إِذَا Yes, this is the fourth point. Is that وَالْفَجْ وَالْيَالِ نَعْشْ وَالشَّفْعِ وَالْوِدْ it comes back to the fact that what Bulwat refers to the creation that comes in pairs. Khalq Allah. Let us look at some examples. What the Mufassir Runa said. It says it refers to Al Kufru wal Iman. Belief and disbelief because they come in pairs. Kufru wal Iman. Was Sama wa Ard. The sky and the earth comes in pairs. Was Saifu wa Shita. It refers to the season. Summer and winter. And you can go on and on to explain It refers to sadness and happiness. Anything that you think of, it comes in here. As Allah subhanahu wa says in the Quran, That everything that's been created, He's created it in pairs. But there is a purpose behind that. There is a perceptual understanding behind that. And what is that understanding? That you may pay heed, you may contemplate, you may think, because there is a reason behind that. So, 
The Mufassir will explain that Shaykh refers to that, the Khalq Allah. And what is with? Huwallah. Kul huwallahu ahad. Allahu Sabbath. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only one. Inna lillahi tis'atan wa tis'ina isman. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has got 99 names and attributes. Wallahu wit. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wit. Yuhibbul wit. And he loves wit. What does it mean? It doesn't mean that he only has got the 99 names. He's got more than that. But this hadith is talking about 99 names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he has got 99 names, he has got 99 attributes. Wallahu wit. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wit. Meaning that he is wit, it doesn't mean that he is three or he is five or he is seven. It doesn't mean that. It means that he is singular. He is one. Allah That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is wit. Where you keep the wit and he loves wit. Among the Fasirun, they said, when we're talking about the Shaf and the wit, it refers even at this stage where we are. It's inclusive in the first ten days of the Hajjah as the Shaf. And the three days following tomorrow and the two other days, that's referring to the wit itself. Among the Fasirun, they refer, they come in a very broad heading to explain the law of the that it refers what is seemingly contradictory in creation. That everything that you look at, they got two qualities in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, ilm wal jahl. Among humankind, you have knowledge and you have ignorance. You have people who are well educated intellectuals and you have people who don't know anything. But when you refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you would say, Al ilmu bila jahl. That he has got knowledge. But there is no aspect of anything that he doesn't know. He is unique in that sense. So he is the wit. And the shafr, the, the, the shafr in itself, refers to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has got these two qualities. What are the qualities? Al ilm wal jahl. Al hayatu wal mawt. Among all the creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have those that are alive. And you also have those that are dead. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, can you apply the water to him? No. He's only al-hayy. He's ever living. The other aspect, al-mawt, doesn't apply to him. So he's wit. So again, you have a chef with wit. And you can go on and on to talk about different aspects in creation. They're tremendous for us to think and contemplate. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in the, in, in the last ayah that I quoted, هَلْ فِي ذَلِكَ قَصَمٌ Is it not enough all these oaths that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enunciated? All these oaths that He has expressed to us. Is it not enough for people to think, contemplate, and be very perceptive? Of course it is. And this is the day when we need to think, contemplate, and be perceptive of the opportunities that we have in doing good deeds in these days, in the days to come, and to couple that with other days throughout the rest of the, of the year. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us an understanding, or give us the understanding, so that we can maximize our opportunities and maximize our time, particularly during these days, not only to eat and drink, not only to marry ourselves, not only to be joyful for ourselves, but also think about others. Kulu, that you eat, you enjoy yourself within limitations, you give out to others, and you can also store, referring to the beat itself, when someone has made a sacrifice. It is so important that the Prophet says that if you're not at the Mount Arafah, or you're not performing Hajj, then what you should do if you're doing a sacrifice? You should abstain from cutting your nails and shaving and trimming your hair. You should even abstain from that the hadith of the Prophet as a sign that you are also observing with the rest of the world, throughout the length and breadth of the world, from a universal perspective, that we are all on the same platform on this wonderful day of Eid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it possible for us. For those of us who have not performed our Umrah, for those of us who have not performed Hajj, so that we can perform and we can maximize the opportunities.
to go to Jannah. That's what we have in this season. That's the reason for this season. It's a reason that we should all embark on because this is what will help us to go to Jannah. As the Prophet says, when you talk about an Umrah, you say, well, Umrah to ila the Umrah, kafara to lima From one Umrah to the next, the expiation of all your sins. As-salatu ila salat, kafara to lima From one salat to the next, the expiation of all your sins. Ramadan ila Ramadan, kafara to lima From one Ramadan to the next, Ramadan is expiation of all your sins. Al-Jum'atu ila al-Jum'at Kafaratu lima baynahuma From one Jum'at to the next Jum'at is an act of expiation of all the sins Wal-Hajj al-Mudrood Laysa lahu jazaa'u in al-Jannah But in the case of Hajj We are not talking about expiation of sins here Wal-Hajj al-Mudrood Laysa lahu jazaa'u in al-Jannah That for a Hajj that is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in which all the requirements are being fulfilled there is no less reward for that than Jannah it is not only expiation it absolves you from everything from every loophole from every sort of obstacles that would be in the way to go to Jannah that's a Hajj that is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the Hajj the Hajj of the Hujjaj who are actively performing Hajj May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the hajj for all of us who have performed hajj. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it possible for us who have not performed hajj so that we can renew our intention and we can perform hajj with ease. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us with these days that we could possibly maximize in this season so that we can enter the <laughs> Thank you.